We're here with Adam Savage in his workshop. You want a matrix prop? Ah! We are excited to learn about some of the magic tricks that go into these props to make them look good for camera. And I bet you have some crazy stories about them too. To replicate the alien suit took me 14 years and cost me about $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today's a very special treat. We usually look at visual effects, but now we're gonna look at the real things, practical objects in our hands. We're here with Adam Savage in his workshop. Adam, thanks so much for having us. Dudes, it is so finally to meet you in yes, person. Yes, it's nice to meet you too. Happy, yeah, happy. It's, I still forget that you guys actually haven't met yet until today. I yeah. can't believe you actually FaceTimed in from the hospital during the birth. That was <laughs> above and beyond the call of duty, but very appreciated. You, when you're growing up in school, like they ask you those questions like, you know, which two people would you want to have dinner with? And my answer was Jackie Chan and Adam Savage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm such such illustrious company. I would love to have dinner with Jackie Chan. I am sure he's a delight. Taking yeah. like one step in here and you're just like overwhelmed by the sheer number of things to look at. And so I'm really hoping to get some really interesting stories about some of these props here and what they meant to cinema history. So understand also that there are very few things in this space that are actually the thing from the movie. Funnily enough, I'm not that interested in collecting the real thing because I want to hand you the thing. All right, Adam, we are excited to learn about some of the magic tricks that go into these props to make them look good for camera. And I bet you have some crazy stories about them too. Okay, I know the perfect thing to start with. Here, right. Come here, I want to show you this. <laughs> we should see this chewy head. I, um, I know it's weird that I've got him in a kind of an empire box, like a- um, Yeah, it's like you're a bounty hunter. It's like, all right, I need my creds. The case things go in is all part of my fetish fetishization of the thing itself. <laughs> So the whole top comes off. Ooh. So yeah, this is uh, this is a chewy made by Tom Spina. His underskull is actually made from scans of Stuart Bre Freeborn's original chewy head. I have I actually have a casting oh, oh, soft what? silicone of what Chewy's face looks like. I just realized like we've never seen hair. him hairless. Oh. <laughs> but it's built off of a fiberglass casting of my head, oh, wow. so that when I open the jaw, his lip curls like the oh, real one. Nice. Whoa, and that, yeah, that yeah. is... Uh, so I never knew that that was a thing. I never knew that they made the lips curl up when the mouths And open. that's, so this is a, there's actually a great lineage to this. So Stuart Freeborn, who did Chewbacca, he also did uh, Yoda. And actually Yoda looks like Stuart Freeborn. If you look up a picture of Stuart Freeborn, you'd be like, oh my God, he sculpted himself. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Um, and that <laughs> simplicity of the mechanism of a cable that's attached to the jaw, that simply when you open the jaw, pulls one of the lips open. Wait right there. And this is Moon Watcher from uh, 2001. This is built for me. Oh! This is built for me by Steve Neal. He just did an amazing job with this. And here, when you open up his mouth, Oh, that it's even lip more curls. so, yeah. yeah. You're actually here. Let me do this. <laughs> wow! wow. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's like that it's looks like really good. Evolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> that lip That's curl. Okay. All right, hold on, Adam. <laughs> I need you to do one more. <laughs> <laughs> but that simple thing, that mechanic was invented for this, and then Chewbacca got a little bit of it, and it's all this really, really low res, low effort excellent activity you get out of the mask. Towards the end of his life, I became friends with Peter Mayhew, and oh. he, a more gentle soul you've never met in your life. And he told me about showing up on episode seven, and I handed him a Chewbacca mask with like 14 servos up in the top, and it weighed like six pounds. And he was like, no, <laughs> take this away. Take all that out. <laughs> he doesn't need any of that for his performance. Chewie only ever had one action, and that was the lip curl. And you know, Mayhew brought everything else to that role in his carriage and his demeanor and his performance. So I actually have in here everything I need for taking oh, care what? of Chewy. I've got hairspray, <laughs> I've got some pins, I've got black makeup for my eyes. Oh, wow. uh, so it's all about, I, I even have a needle punch for repunching hair if I need to. I'm case obsessed. Every time I have an object, I want to build a, 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 a display for it worthy of the object. And this is one of my favorite objects in this whole building. I can't believe I'm actually able to do this, but. <laughs> oh my God. So Dude. this is my Iron Man Mark I armor that I built. This was a kit built by some guys about 2008 that I bought back then on eBay. And there's an aspect of this that I really want to show you, which is if you look right here, it looks like a pretty good paint job. Yeah. Um, but when you turn your camera on it, 
Oh wow, it shines. It, it oh, not only shines, but it shows all these details that your eye doesn't see, yeah. and that's a paint job specifically for the camera. So how do you paint for the camera versus like for eyeballs? Yeah, you, you end up doing things which might look a little overdone in terms of gathering color in a corner. So I can't help but notice that yeah, it's not it's, metal. No, it's resin. This is the whole thing weighs about 25 pounds. But you've replicated crappy welding. You know, I ended up taking tons of pictures of military equipment being cut apart and like looking at welds and okay, yeah. thinking about where where comes in. When I was finishing this, there wasn't enough green in the paint job. Not enough green in, in this reflective metal it's paint. Very, it's very subtle, but like when I do weathering videos, like never one color to weather. Always at least like two and often three. Well, here's where there's a blue here. There's a very light blue oh, going on here. Yeah. Just to get some kicks here and there to like vary it up and make these feel like different pieces of metal. I can see it now that you kind of pointed out. What's more important to making something look like metal? The material that you use or the paint that you use? Oh, the paint. It's all the paint. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could make paper mache look like this without really? much difficulty. <laughs> Is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I actually made the helmet very much like the real one, so it oh, folds cool. up yeah. like that and has, and this it's is- It's got like that freaking welding leather. Yeah, leather yeah it is welding leather, because this was my Mythbusters welding jacket. I cut it <laughs> oh, up. So it's got right. some of my actual drawings oh, wow. from my Mythbusters oh, no welding jacket visible on the <sighs> inside. That's super cool. I also couldn't help but notice Mjolnir and uh, Stormbreaker just sitting over here. Here, grab that. Oh, oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! <laughs> oh my goodness! It's actually cast steel. <laughs> Doesn't that feel great? This, this, this is, this feels like what I think storm. Breaker should feel like if you picked it up. We actually shot a thing years ago where we had a Thor character in our in our video, and yeah. he had like a full size like heavy Mjolnir. Yeah. But like he wasn't able to like swing it around very fast, no. even though he's a super buff guy. It didn't really look good on camera when he was like, "Here, I'm <laughs> Thor." That's why. Here. That's why when you see people fighting with swords in films, this is there's a sword from one of the Narnia films. That is an aluminum blade, and when you swing it around, it makes you look stronger because it's a nice, light blade. Yeah, also, you can see this too. was used for stunt work because it banged against a bunch of other stunt <laughs> swords. Let's see, here's another Weta sword. This Ooh. is from Narnia, and this is, um, the entire Ooh. blade is all, it's all just one piece resin with a, with a nice. rod up its middle so it stays stable. Damn. And such, such, Elegant design. That's the thing I love about Weta is one of those few places that when they went from HD to 4K, Weta was like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're already working at that level of quality. Like they do leather work like this. This is all hand stamped what? at Weta. These buckles are cast at Weta, you know? Wow. I'd like to think that you have like a workout place at your home and it's not like dumbbells and barbells. It's all like, <laughs> it's like swords and like big guns. Like you, you like, you know, you work your biceps by lifting up <laughs> right. giant like and laser cans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I know this isn't Adam Savage's workshop. Um, his is a lot cooler, and he's a much better prop maker and a special effects artist, but it's got a lot of professional tools in here, and that's the point. With the right tools, you can make almost anything amazing, beautiful, and professional. And that's why, courtesy of today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can make a beautiful, award-winning website for your small business. You see, you see, nothing says professionalism like a dead cockroach on the floor. And I, I know you might be thinking, that's nasty. And that's, oh, he's not quite dead. And that's because it is nasty. Unlike our studio where there's dead cockroaches or nearly dead cockroaches on the floor, packaging is important. And Squarespace is there to help you do that without knowing anything about web design. Now there's a couple ways that they do this. First and foremost, they have beautiful award-winning templates that are available to everybody who signs up for Squarespace. They also have a bunch of modern, incredible tools that allow you to engage directly with who's on your site right now. Like video blocks, audio blocks, and connected social media accounts, which allow you to embed podcasts, videos, and connect your social media to display it directly on your website. No need to send people off to your whatever, Instagram. Just hit them right there while they're on your site already. Now, another thing that Squarespace has is some of the best analytics in the game. Not only is it important to present your work to your customer in a beautiful way, but also to understand how your people are engaging with your creations. They give you traffic overviews. They tell you who's coming into your site and how they're engaging and experiencing what you have to offer so that you can make improvements and make it better and better over time. Squarespace also has built-in members area tools, which allow you 
you to make members area access available to your audience. If you've ever tried to do that on your own, it's incredibly expensive and time consuming and Squarespace has done that all for you. And don't forget they got that 24 seven award winning customer service to make it all go smoothly. Now, if you wanna snip some of those costs and go directly farm to table, directly to your audience, Squarespace is a phenomenal tool. We've been using it for years. They are incredible. They got a great team. So thanks Squarespace, not only for that, but also for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in getting 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, click the link in the description below or go to squarespace.com slash corridor crew. That's squarespace.com slash corridor crew. Now, let's get back to that uh, workshop. Not to hold you to it for the rest of your life, right now at this given moment, what are your like top five films? Just right now. Matrix, Raiders, you know, uh, Spirited Away is absolutely in, way in the top five. I won't even qualify it as animation. Um, there's about 30 in my top five. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds yeah. about right, um, yeah. So you threw up Matrix and Raiders at the top of your list. Do you have any props here, either from those movies or reproduced from those Oh movies? yeah, no, I got tons, I got tons. Uh, Pick your, grab <laughs> your yeah, favorite. Reach down here. Here is my Raiders whip that I wow. made. It's 10 feet long. It's ludicrously large. You could take out a car headlight with this thing. <laughs> so I found out that the guy who made the Raiders Whips was David Morgan up in Seattle. And he's, uh, David Morgan's no longer with us, but he was a legend. He was a whip maker for many years and trained many of the best whip makers in the US. Hmm. He was also the only dealer of kangaroo hide in the US. <laughs> what? <laughs> kangaroo hide is the strongest leather there is. No I can kind. give you a piece of 16th of an inch wide, you won't be able to break it. Dang. There is no stronger leather. Those ruse are, yeah. <laughs> Joey is real. Um, it's not just the muscles that are super shredded. <laughs> no, it's totally. Uh, and so I called him up and I, I literally cold called the company. I was like, I'd love to talk to Mr. Morgan about whip making. Got on the phone and spent 90 minutes with me on the phone. Wow. And then he picked out a hide for me that matches the original Raiders hide. I also have, I have many versions of the headpiece of the Staff of Ra, but this is my favorite because it's actually made of bronze. This little detail here on the headpiece of the Staff of Ra is the cherubs. Oh, cool. Let's, uh, let's hit the <laughs> Matrix props. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, The Matrix is one of my favorite films of all time. I mean, 100%. it should be on everybody's top five list. Let's be real. <laughs> the Matrix is amazing. You want a Matrix prop? I want a Matrix prop. How about a screen use lightning gun? <gasps> I worked in a little office with uh, Nancy Noblet and Owen Patterson. She was the art director. Owen was the production designer. And at one point, after about six months, Owen was like, have you not been to the weapons room? And I'm like, <laughs> weapons <laughs> room? Do they, do they keep it on a white psych with a bunch of racks? No. <laughs> I wish. I wish. It was much more space like this. Uh, and he, hand, you know, he handed me this, and I got to hold on to this, oh, this guy. Is heavy. And that feels like what I expect it to feel like. Yeah. This is from the the second two Matrix films, the second and third. In the first Matrix film, I believe the screen is on the other side. I believe this this arrangement is reversed. Usually, a prop master will try and cobble something like this out of like, they'll find some motorcycle strut. Yeah, like kit bashing. Right? Like the smart gun from Aliens has motorcycle struts mounted to the front of an M61 or something like that. Somebody really worked hard to uh, design this and then execute it as a piece of probably laser or water cut metal. To me, this has a lot more work in it than you often see in a hand prop. And specifically, it's all in, it feels like in universe work. It was made in Zion. Yes. Yeah. I can't help but notice you have like a bunch of spacesuits. Yes, I have a lot of spacesuits. <laughs> um, I'm spacesuit obsessed. <laughs> I am fascinated by humans' ability to engineer their environment to be better. Our very hairlessness uh, and our response to it, which was clothing, allowed us for better or worse, to spread to every corner of this spaceship we're on. Yep. That kind of ingenuity thrills me, being one of us, being a human being. Uh, and someone years ago described a spacesuit as an anthropomorphic spaceship. <laughs> and that's huh. not that's just a rhetorical on. turn of phrase. That is actually yes. the most precise definition you could give of it. We think of the spacesuit as a solved problem, but everyone at NASA will tell you clearly, it's not a solved engineering okay. problem. It's really hard. Bodies are so different. It's very difficult to make spacesuits fit all the different sizes of astronauts. So this is oh, cool. exactly cool. one of the helmets from Alien. Wow. Oh. This is cast from Ripley's helmet from a screen used piece. Wow. This is exactly how big they were. The detailing on the inside is all exactly the pieces that they had on the inside. You can see all this. These are bits of like Ertl models. 
and you mm. know you can see truck tires here. Oh, cool! Right, <laughs> this is all oh. original, correct detailing for the alien suit helmet. So <laughs> this is maybe my favorite spacesuit design in film history. The original design came from Jean Giraud, Mobius who was a holdover from Jordowski's Dune art department when okay. Ridley started up the Alien art department. And then John Mollo, Academy Award winner John Mollo and his crew built these suits and they were just masterpieces of engineering. And the real one actually even looks crappier than this <laughs> up close, but it really, really sells on camera. I mean, what the, what do you need this for? Yeah. Who, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's so good. This is the absolute pinnacle to me of great design. To replicate the alien suit took me 14 years and cost me about $10,000. <laughs> what? Because it took me that long to gather all the parts and do all the problem solving and find the collaborators and put it together. This helmet was made by the students of North Bergen High School in New Jersey in two weeks with hot glue and garbage. <laughs> Dude, it's... I bet you on camera they don't look too different. No, no, they don't. That's the thing that blows me away about the work that they did. The, the fact that they didn't have this as size reference and they got so freaking close, yeah. I find that almost annoying, frankly. <laughs> I'm a little bit ashamed of myself that like, because every time I build something from scratch, I build it too big. Uh, I, oh, somehow really? the camera okay. parallaxing and the type of adjustments I make, I make everything a little too large. And the fact they even got like a functional like dome with windows. That's the only thing they spent money on. Huh. This was seven dollars for the light dome, this acrylic okay, bowl, yeah. and everything else was pulled out of dumpsters. Look at this. This is twine that they've infused with hot glue <laughs> oh, to make these okay. lines. There's, There's like, these look like the little injection mold parts for like a yeah, Gundam or something sprue. like that. It's a sprue from a model kit. And there's a pilot sitting there. <laughs> oh, there's a glue in the pilot. <laughs> um, and so in a way, the same compromises are made. Just how he showed you, there's truck tires on here. Their lineage to this is, is so much more direct than they even realized, <laughs> right? This to me makes me so happy. That's so cool. In fact, so they put on a production of Alien mm -hmm. uh, and it got, it, I tweeted about it, it went super viral online. Ridley Scott paid them to put on another production of Alien. Oh, wow. Sigourney Weaver went to that production. The xenomorph came out and drooled methacellulose all over <laughs> Sigourney. She was loving it. And then Ridley actually uh, paid for scholarships for a couple of the actors from the production to go to college to be actors. That's it's amazing. like really, really stunning. Dude, it's just everywhere I look, every possible direction, up or down. <laughs> okay, so oh my God. this oh. is from an IBM Series 703 oh God, computer mysteries. from 1958. Oh, wow. This is a byte. One, is one byte? byte? One byte. <laughs> one byte! <laughs> That's eight bits. Is the tubes all say IBM on them, which I think is like yeah. totally okay, freaking awesome. Sure. That's so, cool. um, so I have because I collect. Here is a bit for each of you for your collection. <gasps> no way! Yes. Yes. No way! <laughs> There's always party favors. <laughs> oh. And wow. so just know, like this was so you could pull it out right. and repair okay. the memory one at a time. Just like shunk. When my son was in high school. He did an assignment where he's talking about memory and he came and he took a picture of this and then we did the math and figured out that an iPhone 3 using this technology would be one and a half cubic kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's wow. how small the, res the how small the resistors and the, the, the gates in a modern wow. modern chip are. Oh my god. And that's why movies didn't use CG until 92. Right? <laughs> Holding this wire memory and looking at these just raw bites, I mean, this is like it's like holding an old film camera for a cinematographer, but where visual effects are. This is like we we have to use memory in our computers every day, and we're so reliant on it. And this is where it all started. This is where I was born. <laughs> this is my cradle. This is what I rested my head on as a baby. I have this habit in which I can't stop buying things and I can't stop <laughs> making things, but I don't have a commensurate habit of getting rid of things. <laughs> and so this becomes this tile puzzle that gets ever, ever closer and ever, ever closer. <laughs> All right, so there's like a million stories here. There's more than we can possibly cover in one video. Yeah. In fact, there's so many stories that we couldn't fit them all into the YouTube version of this video. So the whole thing is up on CorridorDigital.com. Go check it out. Adam's an amazing storyteller. He talks about his time on Mythbusters, plus some other crazy stuff. Yeah, we can't wait to come back and visit him. <laughs>
you are welcome back anytime you want. <laughs> when you say so many stories, th that's actually what this is, I realize. It is a palace to objects and the stories they tell and that I get to share those stories. It's one of the, it's the reason this place exists. It's not just over, uh, over storage for what gets built over there in the shop. This is kind of the purpose. It is such a delight to tell stories to folks who are so uh, into those stories. It's been a total pleasure, you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for sharing it, not only with us, but honestly with everybody watching. You guys should check out Tested. It's yes. Adam's channel. A whole bunch of other people work on it as well. It's very, very cool. You get more insight into this stuff. You get more insight into how these things are built. If you are interested in these objects, these objects that tell stories, <laughs> And you want to either know more about them or how to make them, how to any make of that them, kind of stuff. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of show and tells <laughs> and instructionals. And yeah, we're having a lot of fun. It's very enjoyable. I, I love what you guys are doing on your channel. Um, so go subscribe, go check it out. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Until next time. Until, Until next, next time. time.